A genome is a long linear array of genes separated one after the other, separated by intergenic DNA linking one gene with the next. But the very important characteristic of eukaryotic genes compared to genes found in bacteria is the presence of introns. That is, eukaryotic genes are interrupted, split. There are short co coding regions called exons, separated by us usually very long uh, non-coding regions called introns. So that a gene is first transcribed and then introns must be spliced out in order to have a functional product, a messenger RNA, that then will be translated in the case of protein coding genes or it may function as a non-coding RNA. This splicing process involves a lot of extra energy by the cell during gene expression. It also requires very specific sequences at the ends of introns and various signals for the correct splicing and of course it needs some cellular machinery which in fact is, is called the spliceosome. So it is very interesting to ask how this system evolved in eukaryotes. When did the first introns appear during evolution? Traditionally there have been two competing hypotheses known as introns early and introns late. The introns early concept or introns first says that genes were interrupted by introns already at the very earliest stages of cellular life. In bacteria, archaea and eukaryotes when genes were very short and each gene coded for a polypeptide. Uh, the role of these early introns, which were uh, the, the sequences separating the exons, these early genes, would have been to promote the recombination of those first protogenes into modules, making possible the appearance of longer proteins with more complex combinations of protein domains. Introns then would have been lost later in bacteria and in most archaea. Uh, on the contrary, the introns late hypothesis says that introns appeared much later only in eukaryotes and new introns have been accumulating continuously throughout eukaryotic evolution. As usual, there are pros and cons for both hypotheses. For instance, in the genomes of fungi, plants and even some rare prokaryotes, we find self-splicing introns, known as group 2 introns, uh, which are thought to be the ancestors of today's eukaryotic spliceosomal introns. This suggests that some type of introns were already present at a very, very early stages of eukaryotic evolution, or even in some prokaryotes and this seems to support the uh, introns early hypothesis. Although there is no indication that prokaryotes had anything similar to the modern spliceosomal introns that we find in eukaryotic protein coding genes. However, in uh, modern eukaryotic genes there is no correlation between protein domains and exons, which is what you would expect under an introns early scenario. So it is unlikely that introns played a role in determining the combinations of domains that we find in today's proteins. But on the other hand, scientists have recently been able to analyze a wide variety of eukaryotic genomes and these studies show that the first eukaryotic ancestors already had intron rich genomes and for many of those introns, the location of the intron in the genome has been conserved during evolution. In fact, since the appearance of multicellular animals, the birth of new introns has been rather the exception than the rule. So the jury is still out, but a sort of unifying theory that has gained support recently is that self-splicing group 2 introns present in the genome of the mitochondrial endosymbiont during early eukaryotic evolution invaded the nuclear genome of the eukaryotic ancestor. Now this would have been the main source of those first introns in eukaryotic genomes and of course it would have been crucial, uh, a crucial step in the formation of eukaryotes. Then the splicing process would have been refined by recruiting proteins to do the job more efficiently and at the same time errors in the initial splicing machinery gave rise to the phenomenon known as alternative splicing which has been a key factor in generating protein diversity in multicellular eukaryotes.